If you're taking part in the Irish Readathon this month, this video might help you with your TBR. <laughs> Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am taking you through some of my very favourite Irish authors of all time. So this will take through everything that I have read as a child, things that I have read as an adult, and some of their favourite books of mine. There are quite a couple of authors on this list, so let's get down to business. It would be practically blasphemy to make a video like this and not mention Queen of Ireland, Marion Keys. I am obsessed with with her books. I have loved every single one of them that I have ever read. This one is The Break, which is her penultimate book, which is, so it's the book that came out second to last, but I also have a copy of Grown Ups. I've actually just sent it out to my parents today, so I don't have it with me anymore. This one is one of my most recent favorites of hers. It is about Amy and Hugh, who've been together and have been married for a really, really long time, but Hugh is starting to get a bit of cold feet and itchy feet. He's gotten that kind of seven year itch. Hugh goes off to kind of discover himself and to find himself. He takes off for Southeast Asia for about six months to travel around and just experience what's out there. That leaves Amy to take care of their two kids back at home. This book was written prior to the repeal of the Eighth Amendment and there is a storyline in there that is connected with abortion and with childbirth and that kind of situation. So if that's something that's quite triggering for you, it's good to know about this one. One of my other favorite Marian books is one of the Walsh sister books, but not Watermelon. I did enjoy Watermelon, but I think I gave it like three or four stars when I first read it. My all-time favourite Marion book, however, is of that series, and it's Rachel's Holiday. Rachel's Holiday focuses on the second oldest of the Walsh sisters, Rachel, who is living in New York and is kind of living the high life. She goes to kind of outrageous parties, lives a very drug fueled lifestyle, has a very dangerous relationship with alcohol and cocaine, and one day... She is brought back to Ireland and sent to the Cloisters, which is kind of like a rehabilitation centre. As the book progresses, you get kind of more an insight of what Rachel's life was like in New York and why she was brought back to Ireland. I absolutely loved that book. It's probably one of my favourite books of all time. And I reread it every two or three years or so. I have got some other books by Marion already on my TBR though. So I have got a copy of The Brightest Star in the Sky. I have got a copy of This Charming Man, Angels, which is the third book in the Walsh Sister series and follows Maggie, the third oldest of the sisters. And I also have got a copy of Anybody Out There on request from my library, which is the fourth book in the series and follows Helen, the second youngest sister. There's so many Walsh sisters, you need to actually think about where they fall in the line. I've also got a copy of Lucy Sullivan is Getting Married on request from my library. And because I am a glutton for punishment, I have a copy of Wassermelone, which is the German copy of Watermelon, Marion's debut book. I am very pleased and scared to have this book and I am very pleased and scared to be reading it one day. An author who really connects me with my mom is Kathy Kelly. Kathy is one of my mother's absolute favorite authors and through my mother, I've read about four or five of Kathy's other books. This one has actually been on my TBR for quite some time and I have no idea what it's about. I haven't really read the book. Um, I haven't really read the book blurb. I bought it just after I moved to Germany about four years ago by now. But when I saw Kathy Kelly's name on it, I knew that this was something that was going to help me with homesickness because it's my mother's favorite author. It's an Irish author. It's gonna be an Irish book. There was going to be so many kind of instances of home that I would recognize. And then just still haven't picked it up. But of the Kathy Kelly books that I have read, we are looking at Always a Woman, It Happened in Paris, Best of Friends, Always and Forever, there are about four or five of Kathy's books that I've read and they all have quite large casts of characters focusing in specifically on three different women. And that's something that I really like about Kathy's books in that it will show you three different women who are all very much interconnected. They might be best friends in one book, they're sisters in one book, it's um, two sisters and one of their daughters. I love that they all very closely interconnect and intertwine and you can see aspects of each other's lives coming through in the separate sessions that they have in the book. It's such a great storytelling way. One of my most favorite kind of genre crossover authors from Ireland is Louise O'Neill. This is a proof copy of her most recent book, After the Silence, which I read and absolutely et up. It was 
phenomenal. I have read pretty much all of Louise's YA books, which we have Only Ever Yours, which was her debut, which is kind of like a modern retelling of The Handmaid's Tale. We also have Asking For It, which deals with the issue of consent, sexual violence, sexual assault, rape. I've also read The Surface Breaks, which is a feminist retelling of The Little Mermaid and passed it on to a friend of mine in a kind of blind book swap at Christmas. She told me recently that she read it fell in love with it and instantly went to look at Louise's back catalogue. That is the sign of a good author. After the Silence is Louise's second adult book and that one is a thriller but her previous adult book is Almost Love which focuses on a very toxic relationship and kind of how you can get swept up in the whole realities of a new relationship even when you know that the relationship isn't great for you. It is a more contemporary love story but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a romance. One of my favorite authors when I was younger is Ruth Gilligan. And this is Ruth's very, very first debut book called Forget, which follows a girl called Eva, who is going back to school after the death of her father and noticing the subtleties of how people are treating her a little differently and how situations are changing and how she's not really fitting into her friendship group as well as she did back when her father was alive. And is also starting to strike up a very close relationship with a guy called Zach, who's not as popular in her school. He's a bit of a loner. He's a bit of the music nerd. They have a very close friendship and they start getting closer as the novel progresses. And I really, really loved being from down the country in Ireland and watching these people in Dublin live their lives, go to these places in Dublin that I've been to when I was up there in the city a couple of times at the time I hadn't lived there. But I moved there for college when I was about 19 and went on kind of like a little book trail of everything that's listed in this book. I have also got a copy of Can You See Me Now, which is one of Ruth's, I think it was either her second or her third book, but it has been so long ago since I read it, I genuinely cannot even remember what it's about. Ruth is still writing at the moment. She is a professor of creative writing at, I think, think the University of Birmingham. I'm going to check that and put it in a little description here. Ruth is still writing, but not very much YA fiction anymore. She's now a writer more of literary fiction. So she has a book out called Nine Folds to Make a Paper Swan, which was phenomenal. I read that about two or three years ago when it first came out. And it follows three different people in Ireland with three very different backgrounds. It also was the very first time I think I had read a Jewish character in literature and I really enjoyed that reading experience. Ruth's most recent book is called The Butchers and it's one that I unfortunately haven't got my hands on yet, but one that I also cannot wait to get my hands on. One Irish author whose books I absolutely loved from the get-go is Cecilia Ahern. So this is her most recent book, Postscript which is a follow-up to her debut book, P.S. I Love You, which I read when it first came out and absolutely bawled my eyes out crying at it. P.S. I Love You is the story of Holly, who has lost her husband, Jerry, to cancer. He leaves her a series of notes to kind of get her through the first 12 months without him, giving her not so much stuff to take her mind off it, but stuff to kind of rebuild her life, such as to go out for karaoke nights, to go out, buy a new dress, just little things that are going to get her back into a kind of better place in life. We'll say it like that. And so Postscript is about a group of people who have heard about the letters that Jerry had left for Holly and set up their own kind of group to either make some notes for these people or to or to kind of speak about the people that they have lost in a similar fashion. P.S. I Love You wasn't her, my favourite of her books though. The one that I absolutely loved was Where Rainbows End. There is a film of that which came out as Love, Rosie, and that's the title of the book that you might be a little bit more familiar with. What I really loved about Where Rainbows End is that it was told in epistolary form, which means it isn't told as like a straightforward prose. It's told more in the form of telephone calls, texts, emails, letters, all the kind of forms of communication that Alex and Rosie, the two main characters, had with each other. I really loved so much about that book, but I will admit there was a time where I did not get along well with it. And that was when I listened to the audiobook. The audiobook was fine. It told the story really well and it was performed really well, except that the two main characters had the most plastic Irish accents I think I've ever heard in a book. And that's saying quite a lot because I have seen Far and Away, so I have heard Tom Cruise's really shitty Irish accent. This one was unfortunately 
really bad. So I think I'm going to reread it again in a couple of months or so, but this time it is absolutely going to be as a physical or as an ebook copy. Unfortunately, this is one audiobook that just does not work for me. One of my all time favorite Irish YA authors is Deirdre Sullivan. Deirdre is an absolutely fantastic person and also an absolutely fantastic writer. She has written quite a few retellings. So she has got the Tangleweed and Brian collection, which is a short story collection as a retelling of several of the well known fairy tales that you would have grown up with. But her most recent book and one that absolutely blew me away is called Savage Her Reply. And that is a retelling of the Children of Lear, but from the perspective of Aoife. If you're not familiar with the Children of Lear, it's about Lear, who is one of the kings of ancient Ireland, who has three sons and one daughter. And I always forget what the sons' names are, so here we go. One of them is called A. One of them might be called Hugh. No, Hugh's the Irish for A. I'm cheating, I'm looking it up. Also, I just found out now that the Children of Lear is kind of the basis of Swan Lake. That's pretty fucking exciting. So, okay, we have got four children. One, a girl called Fanula, and we have got three sons, A, so is right, and twins, Fiacra and Con. They are the children of Lear's first wife, Eve. And when Eve dies, Lear remarries a woman called Aoife. And Aoife is very jealous of these children because they remind Lear of his first wife, who he loved more than he loves her. So one day she turns them into swans. You know, as you do. These children are now destined to live as swans for the next 900 years. They have to spend 300 years on different lakes dotted across Ireland. And when the 900 years are over, they immediately turn back into humans. St. Patrick canonizes them, a bell tolls, and they all die. Basically, the moral of the story is don't fuck with Aoife's because we will turn you into a swan. I think I'm actually going to reread it this month as part of the Irish Readathon because there is the prompt to read a book that's connected with Irish mythology. I do know one of the other hosts is reading this same book for the same prompt. I have a feeling it's Elaine Howlin but I am definitely going to reread this one and I absolutely strongly urge you to do the same. My final favorite Irish author is a twofer because there are two authors of this one book and that is the Ashling series by Sarah Breen and Emer McLeisett. Ashling's story started out on Facebook as a kind of piss take of that quintessential country Irish girl that everybody knows and everybody has either met an Ashling or is an Ashling. I'm gonna let you decide whether I've met one or whether I am one. The Facebook group that the two have set up is now something like 80,000 people strong. I don't think they're even letting people in anymore, but the phenomenon caught on so much that there was just no option other than to write a book. At present, there are three of them out. This is the German copy of the original, which is called, oh my God, what a complete Ashling. So this is OMG Diesel Ashling. I've also got a copy of the second one, OMG Ashling Back to the Roots. In English, that one is called The Importance of Being Ashling. And the third one is called Once, Twice, Three Times in Ashling. It hasn't been translated over yet. They are at present working on a fourth one and I am beyond excited to see where this one goes. So there you have it. Those are all of my favorite Irish authors going from when I was younger right up to present day. What Irish authors have you read and loved recently? Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.